Hello, everybody. The first thing I want to take a look at, I think, is just who are you playing? Oh, Sabi Orbi is in for this first map. Twitch is dead? I don't know. Twitch is looking kind of dead? Oh, that sucks. Maybe the same kind of stuff that was happening a few days ago. Okay, so the NYXL are going to be running a brawl comp with Hopper on D.Va. Which is a little bit strange. Would have expected to see the Sigma if this is what they were doing. Maybe it's something specific against the Hunters. The Hunters are running... Yeah, I mean, that's that's really good. Just focusing down Lee early on because he doesn't have support from the rest of his team. You've got to be able to find a pick. Oh, that's also nice. The flashbang from Seviorbi is really good. Being able to take down Eamon. So far, so good for New York. Yeah, Twitch is apparently being wonky. I can't really do anything about that, though. The Diva certainly seems to be a better pick. Again, specifically what the Hunters are running with the fire. But NYXL have to kind of turn up the tempo and just go aggressive on somebody once they go forwards. Can they get a flashbang? No. Alright. Wait, what? Jonite popped his coal. And they weren't able to get a kill there. That seemed to not be very planned at all. Oh, Sabi Obi with a sick kill on the, these guys, though. Let's watch that. Because... I mean, I suppose it is his job to do that, but it's it's normally really difficult. I mean, Jinmu is just so high up in the air. Presumably, he just destroys them as they flank around the side, though. Oh, that's so clean. Very nice, very nice. And NYXL are looking good. Who are you's happy dueling leave? Sebi Obi's staying safe. Jonak kind of beefed his previous call, but he gets those really quickly, so. Not too shabby. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I am finally reviewing this VOD. For some of you, I think Twitch is broken, but for the rest of you, hello, welcome. We want to go back to you. who are you here, I think. They're really not brawling. They're just finding early picks, but I mean, the Hunter's comp is not really a... Oh, Ollie can't buy the hook. Oh my god. That's really nice though. Who are you putting on? Is he gonna go for the blade? He should. Yeah. That's nice. Okay. Gets killed there, but they're surely still gonna be able to take this fight. Actually, Leave has a blade. I mean, Leave is definitely gonna pull the blade. If he's given a chance. Oh, he's so weak. Surely the call finishes him. He's so weak. Yeah, he, he dies. Okay, yeah. This is this is just a win for New York, surely. It should be. If they just stabilize, it should be an easy one. Nice ah, from Sibby Orby. First round, pretty perfect from New York. No complaints. So, I don't know what happens... But there's no hints of it so far here. Yeah, I'll put this vote on YouTube, probably. Did I see the R competitive Overwatch post about the Chinese analyst perspective on the game? No, I didn't. I can guess, though. Did, were the Chinese analysts just incredibly excited that the Hunters won? And said the Hunters played amazingly? And then Wolf and ZP said that New York played like trash? Is that, is that what happened? I can totally imagine that happening. I bet there's a bit of both. Oh, they said coaching difference. Oh, I see. Coaching difference. Interesting. Well, like I said, we haven't seen any evidence of the Hunters even having a chance in this match so far. So, one round in though. Don't want to be a one round Andy. I mean, obviously I know that New York end up losing this in a horrible fashion. 
Okay. Sabi Obi just misses his flashbang because it hits the door frame. A lot of pressure in this early rollout from the Hunter's comp. It's perhaps a little strange that NYXL... I don't know. I was gonna say it's a little strange that NYXL aren't running some kind of, like... Attack the point kind of comp, and then I realized that May is out of the rotation. And also, uh, the Hunter's style is pretty good, actually. Just being able to spam those players that do that in the first place. I think a real key to beating this Hunter's composition, though, is to dual leave. Leave does not have the resources that Who Are You does. And so if, if Who Are You can force the fights against leave, they should be in a good position. Early call, trying to burn down late, young. That's quite nice from New York. Decisive. I like it. I like it. Who are you is struggling to build up his blade. But, I mean, you compare that to Leave, and Leave's got so many more bodies to shoot, so. Not. Not, uh. What's the word? It's understandable. It's understandable. Vegitax P, thank you very much for the four months and keep five. Thank you for the new sub as well, actually. Keeps. Ball in the back. Probably on Sebiobi. I assume they're able to escape. Nice from Who Are You. Gets out, gets the heals. Mano ended up going down, though. And Hopper couldn't stop this. It's all got a little too scrappy here. It's now a 4v5 fight. Leave's still coming off the respawn, but Leave will have... Uh, I don't think dueling the Fire Mercy here is the play for Who Are You. I, I just think he should be... Uh, getting in position to counter Leave. Or in the middle of the fight, trying to get onto Langser. Or, or even late, Young. I think that fight started out really nicely. And then Mano went down. They kind of got split apart, but that's that's what the Hunter's Comp is designed to do. So again, not disastrous for New York. Bomb just to remake. And again, oh okay. So now Sebiobi is swapped over to the Sombra, which makes a lot of sense against this comp, right? Like you can hack. I mean, you can try and hack the Fire Mercy, but they're not really your targets. But if you can hack the uh, the Zarya, or the Ball, or the Genji, or even the Lucio, they're just set up targets for the rest of your team to attack. Uh, that does mean, though, that they don't have the flashbang. That has been kind of crucial to stopping Eamon just tearing them apart. But then the Sombra should be able to do something somewhat similar. Unfortunately, it does seem to have just given a lot more space to Jinmu there. Perhaps you need some kind of long-range hit scan just to keep these guys at bay. I'm not really convinced in the Sombra change, even though it makes a lot of sense. Like, in an individual basis. NYXL aren't really playing dive. If they were playing, if Mana was on Winston right now, and they were trying to hack targets and then dive on them, I think it would make a lot more sense. But as it is, Mana's just gonna have to slowly advance, trying to shield off the Pharah the entire time, and the Pharah can just sit above their heads. Okay, wait wait a second. I think Gaiman got hacked, and I was too busy wondering about how they fall to pieces. I think... I think Sombra Tracer dive would be really effective. Or even Sombra Genji dive would be pretty effective. But... Not convinced that the Rhine syncs up very well with the Sombra. Okay, yeah, Eamon gets hacked. Shatter comes in onto Langsa. Really nice retake from the NYXL, actually. They don't even need to use the blade. Okay. Clean. Decisive. It's good. Let's take a look at who are you. See how he decides to use his blade. There's a lot of ults here available for the Hunters. It's very hard for who are you to find anything with this. Hop right to grab. Yeah. I saw that pop up in the kill feed. I, I'm not convinced that it would have made a large difference, though, would it? Maybe I'm wrong. Wasn't it, like, just somewhere over here?
I don't think it would have made that much difference. He would have caught... I mean, it would have made some difference. He would have caught the tanks, but I think Langston would have died anyway. Who are you would have just killed him. But it's a really nice play from Hopman on the last. Hunters, though, so many ults. What do we do here? Oh, the hack onto Aemon is really nice. Very good. Being decisive as soon as they find that first pick, pushing forwards. Why is he trying to fucking blade the Pharaoh Mercy in midair? Why is who are you doing this? Why don't they try and snowball into the 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 other guys? Like, Sabi Obi has currently got a hack on Lengsa. Why isn't who are you trying to do that? I mean, I suppose that you need to pressure the Fire Mercy maybe a little bit just to stop them from getting positioned, but I don't even think you really need to do that. I think you just need to play fast on the rest of their team. Try and snowball the pick on Eamon into an advantage. I don't know. Don't really agree with how much who are you is trying to be the guy that pressures the pharmacy. I think he's missing out opportunities to to sync up with Sebi Obi and actually put pressure on Langser or Late Young instead. So now they've lost control of the point, and they're going to go for EMP Nanoblade, but who are you ends up dying? Why, why does who are you go in that fast? Is he trying to get a touch? Mano's gone over to the Winston as well, which makes sense. He just doesn't see leave. He just gets 1v1. And then the beat comes in too late from Animo to save him. Well, mm, still winnable for New York. Even though they've lost Animo, if they can touch the point here and keep things going. Oh, they, they impede, but that just forced out the sound barrier. Who are you, though, did find the kill on Langsa. And they, they actually get the round. That's very nice end of round pl clutch play by New York, just juggling their tanks on and off the point. I... That was really close towards the end. Okay. Nothing bad in that first round from New York, really. I mean, like, no no major flaws. Some small stuff that might bite them later on, but Ready for battle. nothing big. Pepe laugh. Is that a pizza? No, it's a PB&J. They stripped the barrier with the MP. No, I think they buried it after the MP, didn't they? I think Sebi Obi was forced to EMP just to have a chance to win that fight and then Langsa countered with the sound barrier. Was it barrier then EMP? Oh. I didn't even notice because after the EMP was used, there was still a bunch of people with barrier left on them. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on here then. So hunters are running the Genji Ash defense with um, with a Sigma. Oh, sorry, with a Winston. Um, Mercy actually had quite a lot of pick t uh, pick rate time. Mercy Zen actually had quite a lot of pick rate in um, in Asia towards the end of last week, so. I think it makes quite a bit of sense. I mean, the Mercy isn't going to be that useful on point B, but on point A, to be able to get the reses off, to be able to damage boost Jinmu to build up his blades faster and then leave just to do the hit the shots. NYXL oh, doing a lot of damage to Jinmu. And Who Are You finishes him off. Great first pick. This should crack open point A. They take control of the bridge, push people off the high ground. I think they're just healing Hopper up before they go back in here. 
And then A's up top as well. This is really slow from New York. I mean, they're always quite a slow team to take control of the map. But now Jinmu is actually behind them. So we've got to be a little bit careful about that. Nice hack onto Aiting, though. And even though Jonat goes down, they've already initiated. So this should be fine for them. This is the same kind of New York style of dive. They slowly control the map, squeeze you into a corner, and then they eventually dive onto you. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. That looks like classic New York from 2018, to be honest. Great, great punish onto Jinmu as well. Right at the choke point, they put pressure on Jinmu. Jinmu dashes away. Who are you's already there? He's literally already here to finish him off. So, that's that's an impressive point A take from New York. Good coordination. Let's take a look at Nene here. Aiting is normally a bit of a weakness for the Hunters when he gets subbed in. I haven't really been impressed with him. I'm surprised they didn't go for a hack on Aiting there. But he's going for the EMP anyway. EMP, the blade. They managed to crush the squishy players, Zen and the... Uh... They're trying to punish though. They're trying to peel. Mm, is that the best thing to do? Yeah, I mean, that's fine actually. It's the, the New York style. And it does set you up with all six players ready to fight the the after engagement on the point. So, yeah. Nice clean play. Now who are you just going to try and feast on people? they got a tracer to deal with on the point, but who are you duels them? Who are you picks up another kill? Who are you should just be able to feast in these OT situations? This is where he's should be at his best. Another EMP onto both of the tanks, another blade from Who Are You, and this should be all done. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, so far New York have looked great. They've looked great. They look like they understand the dive, they've been in clutch at the right times, they've been able to find success with Savi Orbi as well. Stop Pepe laughing, alright chat? Stop Pepe laughing. They look like a genuinely good team. I don't know what the fuck happens. I don't know what happens. I haven't seen this match yet. Somehow they lose this series. What? What? Oh, fuck it now. Okay. All right. What the hell goes wrong? By the way, I don't know which maps they lose. I don't know whether they lose or win this map. Surely they win this map. Do they get reverse swept? <laughs> Who are you just says yes. <laughs> That's not something to be fucking happy about. Who are you? No, it's not. All right, let's take a look at Nene on this. So, the Hunters are running an all-in dive with the Echo and the Genji. I'm not really a fan of this comp. I think, in theory, it should leave, like, Nene to free farm, and I don't think that Genji and the Echo really synergize as well together as some of the other dive options. Nene's looking for the flank behind. Almost always the Echo would come behind here. But, actually, Leave is just spamming and ends up dying to... Jonak anyway, so... I don't know. I don't think that that's like a... Whoa, hello. Get out of my face. Ask for the peel. Mm. Jinmu actually finds two there. What the fuck? How did Jinmu find so many people? Let's take a look. Jinmu's normally a mad bastard. Where is Jonak positioned as well? Oh, he's up on the side right here. Yeah, wow. Finds that shuriken. It's actually a fairly nice peel, honestly, from New York, but um, Jimmy finds too much value. I think uh, Animo should have continued to tank Jonak, and Jonak probably should have given uh, Jinmu a bit more respect. They, they might still be able to stabilize in this fight, or, and at least contest the point. 
Because they found the early pick on leave, and I think they killed a couple of others to collapse on that dive too, so. And the spawners are just now coming back in. Mano and Nene. And Jonak's back in on the fight as well, I think. Although he's positioned on the low ground. Mm. Animo's weak. But Mano goes for the counter dive with Nene. This is really nice from New York. Their backline gets pressured, so they decide to pressure the other backline in reply. Who you needs a bit of heals. They need to establish high ground positions as well. The, the main flaw with New York's hold now is that Jonak's on this low ground. But he is playing really far away, but it just means that he doesn't have line of sight to discord as many targets as he would like. Oh, Jimmy with the blade. Oh, Huyu executes him. And now Huyu is just free for his own blade. Absolutely free. Huge from New York, actually. Huge. New York are playing really well. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. They, they look like... Uh, a well-coordinated dive team that understands their win conditions, understands positioning and how to punish their opponents. This is this is New York playing, maybe not at their peak, but they're playing back to like good old New York. You know, there's no way they lose this series. The Chengdu Hunters haven't beaten a, a, a team in months. They haven't beaten a team in months. Are you a bit weak? Nene with a pulse bomb? Nice. Time for who are you to get a bit more involved and build up his blade, I think. Oh, a trance. Alright, maybe not then. Back it up. Oh, Leave got the uh, duplicate onto the Winston as well. Don't go for that duel on Jinmu. I know it's tasty, but... This is a bad position to be in with two primal in Winstons. Jesus Christ. Echo just changes the game so much when she duplicates. Makes everything fucking chaotic. Animal with some nice peel there, I think, onto uh, Jonak as well. I'm not quite sure how they survived eating and leave, double primaling them in a small place, but uh, I think, I mean, the primal tech must have just been off. They, they absolutely should have got a kill in that tiny area. That's the kind of push you can't afford to lose, honestly, if you're the hunters. You invest both of your primals and you don't get a single kill out of it, as far as I can remember. Oh, the bomb. A kind of a perfectly placed bomb as well from Hotba. Not gonna lie. Elsa's got good positioning. Oh, and Nene dies without mana there as well. Hmm. This fight has got really scrappy because XL lost all of their positioning because of those primals. And they're just now trying to hold on to the point, trying to stabilize. Jin moves a little far forwards there, but he's going to get help. Uh, NYXL are definitely going to recontest this though. Hob is going to come back in, touch the point. Mana's in as well. Oh, the kill on Who Are You though is fat. Let's watch that from Jin Mu's point of view. That peel is really nice as well for Mano. Harbor and who are you just leaping in? Whoa, that's clean. That's nasty. Jinmu just destroys who are you. And then the Discord Orb into the slash and dash on Animo and Jonak. That's really nice from Jinmu. It's not all a huge individual play, but it certainly is like an individual play that turns this from being even into one. Because it was still pretty even towards the end of that fight. Yeah, like, yeah, XL didn't really have the positioning, control of the high ground, but they were looking to recontest, and they, they certainly could have found an angle in. Let's take a look at what Leave does here. Yeah, Jinmu absolutely destroyed. Jinmu playing Junkrat in the Summer Showdown. I know, man. I know. How, how did this team justify not playing Genji? Okay, well, not the uh, not the most beautiful primal tech I've ever seen in my life. This is looking pretty bad for the hunters, though. I guess if Jimu could get another blade, then they could Valken blade. Well, Hopper's always got the bomb to peel, and New York are just such a good defensive team anyway. 
But, I don't know. If Nene finds a pick here, that really... ...stuffs things, because it's going to build time for who are you to get his blade. Oh, that was close. Mm, that's now a pretty big opening, but... Jimmy still isn't quite there with his blade, so... Maybe they can take position off this, but... How the hell does who are you get out with a kill there? I thought Jinmu was going to kill him. Oh my god, who are you? Alright, we've got to watch that from his POV. Nene dies. Who are you's forwards? Great Discord orb from Jonah. Just destroys them. Just destroys them. It's actually, as a bit of an aside, it's amazing to go from like watching Super to watching Who Are You? And the stats wouldn't really be able to tell you the difference. You should be at peak performance levels. 60 seconds you know what I mean though? Like if you play Genji smart, you're gonna, you're gonna still get a lot of value. Whereas people like, oh my fucking god, people like this guy are just an animal. Like what the hell is he doing here? He just fully believes that you can just take down a Genji Mercy combo on his own for the blade. He's done it before, why not? Hunters with ults of their own to work with here. I mean, how do you approach this if you're hunters? You need your tanks to make space, but it has to be something explosive because it's like right at the end. I don't know, like a self-destruct engage or something? But you probably need your tanks to touch the point. So like maybe 18 just has to jump on the point and then pop its primal. That's good. I'm surprised that he didn't... I'm surprised that Jinmu didn't try and go in there and see if he could slash Animo and get the rest of his team to finish Animo off when he dashes away. Oh, who are you with the blade? You all look really clean. Who are you's maybe a little ambitious with what he tries to do? But Nene and Mano and Hopper have got great synergy together when they're diving. They're playing decent comps. They're just they're just they're just playing well. They're playing good. If I was the casters of this game, if I was like ZP and Wolf or any nationality casters, I would be I'd be writing the, the tombstone. I'd be writing the eulogy for the hunters here. They haven't beaten a team in weeks. They they're coming up against a New York team that looks really solid, really coordinated on their game. I I'd be calling this one a GG, to be honest. Oh, what's that? We have three more maps? Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Ready for battle. I mean, I wouldn't say that the Hunters have played badly, though. Jinmu's had his moments. Leave hasn't really shown up in the same way that I would have liked him to, but... But the NYXL have just been playing well. It's not like the Hunters have been shit, though. In okay, Havana is a very different map. It's really trash for dive. I don't expect that we'll see dive. But then again, I mean, the Hunters just play ball everywhere, don't they? Ball Zarya. It's very disruptive. Very disruptive against a double shield kind of comp that you would want to run here. I think running some kind of, like... Uh, McCree Brawl is probably the best to be able to deal with Eamon. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. I'm already not really a fan of the NYXL's comp. Like, I don't think the Mano is going to be able to do anything on the Winston down these long passages. I don't really believe it. And I also don't think that they have enough CC to be able to deal with Eamon. But they haven't seen the team comp yet, so maybe they don't know what they're playing into. I would prefer a Rhino McCree. 
rather than a Ash and a uh, Winston. Eamon's in, Eamon's out. Okay, Jonak with the first pick on leave, though. That uh, shouldn't really happen, but there you go. Gets the res off. Mano's now on the high ground. What do New York do here? Uh, Eamon's weak and discorded, but they just don't have the damage. They don't have the heroes to be able to punish him. Okay. Another kill on Iveltal. Iveltal's a bit out of position there. Mano's gonna dive in. I think they should be focused on Jinmu, not Eamon. I think that's a mistake from Mano. Otherwise, they would have got the kill there, I think. But okay, Mano has to back off. It's actually really difficult for Mano to do his job in this position, but he's playing it pretty smart. Eamon's really weak. Surely he dies. Oh, they try and pop transfer him as well. But the blade could clutch this, though. It's an early blade from Jimmy. Okay, it forces out the transfer from Jonak, so things are fairly even. Mano's... Ooh, Mano's not weak. I thought he was weak. He's like half health, always getting pressured down. They just don't have the finishing power on these people, though. They can't kill people. Oh, are they just gonna clutch this? This is a fault of the comp more than anything else, though. Yeah, uh, Eamon gets the kill on who are you and Mano. That's that's a fault of the comp, though. But because you look at you look at what the NYXL were doing, they got forced with their trance back here, and they want to try and push forward, and they want to try and like take picks on people, but they just can't find anyone to punish. Though the minefield was really good. Eamon played that incredibly well. Eamon has been playing really well on the on the ball, though. Like, he's constantly slowing them down. He's delaying the objective. He's harassing them. But no one can punish him. They can't punish him at all. I think Sebi Obi's not doing enough on the Ash. I would, I would want... Like I said, I would want to move more towards a McCree Brawl comp here. Even though the double shield is... I mean, you get harassed by Eamon. I mean, either that or you play, like... Sombra Tracer or something. But I don't think that Sombra Tracer is... I don't think this is the map for Sombra Tracer. I, stylistically, I think the comps match up well against each other, but I don't think this is the map where you want to be playing that. Leave has not had a good day. He has been... He's getting shit slammed. Sebi will be in the back. Bob knocks up Bob. We've got some Bob on Bob action. They're just shooting each other in the faces. Both Bobs die. Molly's incredibly weak, but NYXL are just stuck in a corner as they try and regen some health. Alright, Mano's got a bit of positioning. Jin moves in and killed Jonak. They get their res though, surely. Eamon. Okay, Eamon does actually go down that time. But the blade's out, and the blade has been built faster than Jonak's trance. Nice punish from Who Are You. But this doesn't really work. I mean, the NYXL need all of their players up in order to beat the Hunter's comp. Anyone dies, but that's bought enough time for the rest of their team to get back into the fight with good positions. Okay, that trance is... The trance is a little odd, but I guess we need to look at what's happening on the other side here. So, Eamon goes in. Can't quite get out in time. Gets taken out. Jinmu, though, has flanked and immediately assassinates it. Animo. Wow, he nearly gets Jonak as well. Forces out the trance on the other side. Oh, and Jonak doesn't heal up mana. Okay, he does. I think they should have used that trance to take a more forwards position, though. I think they've, I think they've fucked themselves there a little bit by having to use their abilities just to get back onto the payload. And then another good initiation from Eamon. I assume they get full health here. 
I don't think it's really a problem with New York's execution. I think it's a problem with New York's comp. I think they should have been quicker to change to something that actually can put pressure on Eamon. Sabi Orbi now back on the tracer. This is a clutchable, super clutchable. Sabi Orbi did more on tracer than he has done the entire time on Ash. The entire time. I mean, yeah, I said run Sombra Tracer, but you could run Genji Tracer as well if you want to keep who are you on the Genji. You need the Tracer for the consistent damage, or you need, like, you need something that can do consistent damage. I prefer the McCree, I think. McCree might find it difficult against the Ash, though, I suppose. Which is maybe why they don't want to run it. But then Leave hasn't had a good time so far anyway. I don't think you have to be too worried about him. I think you're more worried about Eamon. If you just sit in passive positions, then you stop Eamon being such a terror. Nice kill from Molly. Good Discord orb and a headshot. Oh, the grab into the Resurrect. That's so nice from Late Young. Good work there. Jonak continues to just slang out shots on Zen. Dronax Zenyatta has not missed a beat. But Molly's pretty good as well, actually. Right, let's watch um let's watch Jinmu here. Actually, no, let's focus on the NYXL. Because New York are pushing in. They know they're gonna be facing off against the blade. I mean, you can solo grab the blade here. And I think it's value. If you find a solo grab and a pick onto basically anyone, that's value, actually. Sebi Obi's around the back. The Genji's not really in position, but that could be a nice one clip. No. Alright, and now he's got his mercy on him. You not you don't have a chance of doing that. Ah, uh, who are you's been burnt down somewhere else? What happened to who are you? Is he on his own here? No, he's with mana. Oh, it was a minefield. Where where does the grav go? Oh, it's a solo grav on Eamon. That's some large miscommunication, I think. Because if, you, if you've if you got a plan to solo grav Eamon, then why isn't who are you playing with you? Like, if you're going to plug passive and just wait for the solo grav anyway, then why isn't... Uh, why isn't Sebi Orbi just waiting for that before he initiates? Oh, that's a ballsy res. Nice coordination. They're playing on the low ground here, though. They've just got no control over the positioning. Who are you again, weak? Oh my god! Jinmu! Jinmu goes in to try and punish Who Are You? And he was really close to getting the kill, actually, but he just gets burnt down by Hopper. Classic Jinmu things, just not afraid to dash. I mean, look at this from Jinmu's point of view. Just, i This is the most Jinmu shit in the world. He's like, ah, yes, a weak Genji. I shall pull my blade. Oh, uh, wait a second. <laughs> Jonak and Hotbar are right there. Ready to Discord me, headshot me, and then just laser me down. Bomb in the back line from Sebiobi. Doesn't really get too much. They haven't been able to execute a dive because they haven't been able to get in through the chokes because it's so difficult when Eamon just applies CC with his pile drive. And then Late Young's on a high ground. But I think it's the coordination that's off because if they... Oh my goodness. If they can get... Sebi will be to harass the backlines at the same time as who are you and mana push in. I think you just have to try and force your way through the choke point. Or use your ults to initiate. But they beef their ults when they had them. Nevertheless, I, I do think that it's... The Hunters playing actually a pretty nice comp. And playing pretty well. More so than New York playing badly. I think New York have got like a... Not the best comp for the situation, but I don't think that... There's some problems with their execution, but I think they've just been outmatched on a map that is not dive favored.
Yo, got some subs. Um, Vegetaxp, thank you very much for the four months. Wire Trooper, 17 months. Oki224 for 16 months as well. You, is the 16 month, 17 month like the beginning of the companion streams? I think it is. I think it's the Visa Hell. Avian OW, thank you for the five months as well. Thanks for the entertainment. Did we start at map three? No, we started at map one. Furious Yammer, thanks for the 100 bits as well. Eamon's Pov in the solo grab is pretty funny. <laughs> Chat is having separation anxiety. Can you give them some attention before they chew up all the shoes? Yeah, are you guys, are you guys struggling out there? Are you guys struggling without streamer talking to you? <laughs> are, you are you doing okay? <laughs> Type a one in the chat if your mental is all right. Type a two if you're boomed. What map is this? This is map three. Oh God, a lot of twos. A lot of twos. God, a lot of boomed mentals. A lot of boomed mentals. How would the hack fist Paris was running go against the Hunter's comp? Um, I think that would be pretty good. Like, I, I think that that's a, another great option for a composition. You, but the important thing to note there is that they need the Reinhardt to be able to approach. Because otherwise, running a, you're running no long-range hit scan if you're running hack fist. And you're also running a Doomfist who... It's a bit like a Winston in some sense of you can just poke him from long range and then he can't initiate because his his ability his movement abilities are on a cooldown and they're quite short range. So you need the Reinhardt shield, which is why I said at the beginning of this map, I wish that New York had played a Ryan McCree kind of style of play because I think that it would have been much more effective on this map. But yeah, even if they didn't have the McCree, if they ran a Ryan, a Ryan Sombra kind of style, you know, paired with... Head with whatever you like, honestly, but yeah, Doomfist is a great option. Um, but you could go for the Genji as well if you wanted to. I think that would get you some success. Uh, why does NYXL keep switching players? Uh, I'm, I'm not totally sure on that. I mean, they've been playing the same kind of heroes as well. Sebiobi and Nene have both played the Sombra so far, right? Um, Nene's tended to play more of the... Ash? No, that's not even true. I don't know. I don't know. Answers on a postcard. Why is ABOB and Nene getting switched out from map to map? It doesn't really seem to be a hero thing. Um, maybe a bit more of a stylistic thing, but I'm I'm not really sure. Especially considering that NYXL don't seem to have prepped too well for the Hunters. Because they don't have a good answer for um, the ball style of play on Havana. Ready for battle. Does Sombra hard counter Wrecking Ball? Would it force Eamon to swap? Sombra, Sombra doesn't hard counter Wrecking Ball. It's a it's a good counter. It's a very solid counter. Um, but I don't think it would force Eamon to swap because Eamon's like hyper aware of it. So if you're running a Sombra, Eamon's still going to try and find some value by dropping from like close ranges and slamming and then shooting the Sombra a little bit when she tries to hack and taking a bubble uh, if he does get hacked or if he's about to get hacked. So I think there's there's definitely ways for the Chengdu Hunters to outplay a Sombra if it comes in. I do think, though, that a Sombra would just generally be better, though, because it it gives you that... What you want to do, really, is you don't want to... I mean, you'd love to hard counter Eamon if you can, but more importantly, you want to make him a little bit scared. Like, you just, you just want to put a bit of pressure on him. And whether you have the McCree doing that, or whether you have a Tracer doing that, or whether you have a Sombra doing that, you just stop Eamon from fucking rolling around like he's a pig in mud. You, you, you want him to be, you know, going in a little bit carefully and not getting as much value as he, uh, as he is at the moment because he's scared of being punished. You want him to be scared. And at the moment, he is not scared whatsoever. He's just running around, sloshing around in the mud. Would a Sombra that plays with the team help, like a defensive Sombra? Yeah, that's the that's the kind of Sombra that I mean. A Sombra that stays more with the tank line. And you're just aiming to... Not so much peel, but you're aiming to like play at the front line, do damage, build up EMP, and then get hacks from the safety of a shield. <coughs> but then Sombra doesn't build EMP. Sombra could definitely build EMP if you play in the front lines. That's like one of the best ways of building EMP. That's how, like, uh, Lip and Edison and Doha would usually play. Very aggressive. Take the uh, 
take the armor packs. I mean, obviously, armor pack doesn't give you actual armor anymore, but <clears throat> it still gives you healing, so. Mm, yeah, I mean, maybe that style of somber has been nerfed a little bit, but you would still try and run the brig anyway in that situation. <clears throat> Jim Jack, thank you for the seven months. And thanks for the 100 bits as well. I had to donate another 100 bits for you to answer. It's my last 100. Can you please shout what you are doing in my swamp in a Scottish accent? Can you try and shout what is going on in my swamp in a Scottish accent? I'm not a fucking monkey with some symbols that you can just wind up and... T t hey, can you say, uh, can you say, cheers, mate, let's have a crumpet. Uh, listen, I'm not just going to do what you tell me to do. Just because you, just because you what, just because you give me some money? What do you think I am, some kind of cheap whore? You can just pedal out? Someone that's going to dance? A dancing bear? That you can give a snack and poke with a stick and, uh, and I'll do tricks for you? <clears throat> what are you doing in my swamp? So I'm going to say it in a very, in, in like the exact opposite manner to the, uh, to the style you asked. Hopefully that gave you so much, oh my God. Let me just wind back. Hopefully that gave you so much disappointment that you'll never ask me to do that again. Oh my god, judge my hot take. Okay. If anyone else want to get better and be contenders for number one team, they need to get rid of Jonak. Whoa, that's a hot take. They have to focus on him too much and it takes up too many resources and so they don't do as well as they could. His protect the president style is outdated and they need someone new, even if to just change the team mentality. So they can't just fall back to their old, oh well, we're losing, but Jonak will carry mentality. That's, that's like... There's a nugget of truth in there, right? Like, I agree with you in terms of Jonak's play style being wrong, but you don't toss the baby out with the bathwater. You can still... I, I, you don't just throw away arguably the greatest flex support in the game because his play style is wrong for the meta. You, d you teach him. You try and mold his mind. This guy has only had two years of playing in a competitive team. Like, he, he can't be stuck in his ways yet. If you're a forceful coach and you really try and drill it into him, he's got to be able to change. The guy cannot just have one play style. I, I don't believe it. He would have been taught if he could be? No fucking way. What, you think that... You, you're guaranteeing me that the coaches for New York have been the best that they could possibly be. You're, you know for a fact that the coaches have tried everything possible with Jonak. You believe 100% in the coaching staff, and you think that if they failed, no one on earth can change Jonak. Don't believe it whatsoever. I don't believe it. I think that a lot of the time, the way that people play comes down to their innate style, but also how their coaches have encouraged them to play as well. I think that it absolutely is a thing that a good coach would be able to drill out of him. Krusty could change him. I mean, Krusty has also failed to drill some of the feeding ways out of Violet, but that doesn't hurt them too badly. But yeah. Um, I, I, I agree in some sense that Jonak needs to change a bit in order to be a contender, but... Not, um, they, they shouldn't get rid of him. Now, having said that, his BAP sometimes shits the bed, man. Okay, but let's, let's take a look at what's going on here. NYXL are playing the Genji Ash, um, kind of comps. I don't think this makes any sense whatsoever. Neither Genji nor Ash have any kind of CC. They don't help you deal with any of the heroes that we've seen so far coming out from the Hunters. Your main tank is just going to get juggled around and there's no one to help him. So now they've just gone full dive instead. Uh, full dive could work, but... I don't think that it's the best comp 
at all. I also don't think this is the best map for it, so I dislike this decision. Mano's been stopped in the air when he goes for the dive. They've wasted both of their bubbles. Nice punish onto Jinmu. Jinmu's too far forwards. Jinmu's like... Jinmu and Late Young, once he pops his bubbles, are the only vulnerable people on this team to the NYXL comp, so they should be the players that are most scared, and Jinmu's just Jinmu, so he just runs in. Nice snowball from New York. I like the pushing forwards, punishing people, diving Late Young after they, after they got it. I don't think they're going to win this map, though. I don't think you can win this map with Dive, particularly against what Hunters are running. Like, you would have to be not just so clean, but the Hunters would have to make so many mistakes to give you Dive targets and not punish you for it. Wait, what is... Uh, what Was the question something about Super's Genji? Was there some... Did he talk about Super's Genji already? Alright, uh, chat. This week... This week, Plat Chat will be doing an in-depth review of the Super Genji. An in-depth live stream review of the Super Genji. So, d don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The Super Genji is going to get some attention. It's just not the time nor the place. With Super? I didn't even think about that, but that would be pretty fucking good, wouldn't it? I don't know. I'm not going to promise it'll be with Super. We'll get Super on Plagia at some point, but... You know, gotta, he's a busy man. Gotta see what his schedule looks like. Wait, what happened here? I missed what occurred. They they push forward, they got the kills, and then who are you, Blades? Late Young died. Who are you also died though, because Eamon just bo boops him into another reality. So now they've traded who are you for Late Young. Faster spawns for Late Young? Wait, why the fuck would you res Late Young? Well, I guess that saves you like five seconds. Maybe more like ten seconds, actually. If you want to push instantly, wow, yeah, they do want to push instantly. That's actually, that's actually so decisive from the Hunters. I'm not going to lie, I love that after watching how it played out. That's so good. Just insta res on Late Young when he was about to, he was about to come up anyway, just so that he can give the bubble. They literally use res just for the bubble onto Jinmu so that he can continue the momentum with Who Are You Dead. Nice punish on Who Are You. Oh, good beat though. Good timing on the beat. The grab is pretty huge. They can't kill late young. Hopper still doesn't have his grab. But the comp is just not effective. When do you record it? The Super Genji thing? We're not going to record it. We're going to live stream it. It'll be live streamed on the Platchat YouTube channel. We're still figuring out a day for it, but we'll announce it shortly. Sorry, Sir Moji, but th this is the uh, this is the way it's got to be. I mean, this map is a uh, this map is done at this point, I think, because hunters have control over this high ground. Late Young's position. No, it's not done. What am I talking about? I think New York can still retake this with alts. They get a solo grab on someone, they chain it in. I think they're in a, still a decent position. Yeah, grab onto late young. Okay, can't blade though, coming out from Jinmu. Dude, he's fucking. He's building up his blade really fast. Because he's just farming mano. This is another reason, I think, why a shield is really important. Why mano should be playing the Rhine. In this map, generally. God, he's just demolishing. Well, yeah, that's that's some prime boomage. Hunters? Hunters? Okay, all right. If the narrative at the end of this map was that NYXL played badly, I don't think that's true. I think that NYXL 
NRXL's comp was not good. I think that they're struggling to understand how to deal with the Hunters, but I fundamentally, I think it was the Hunters that played really well in this map. Jinmu with some sick blades on offense. Eamon's been playing like a fucking freak. Young's positioning is very good as well. And they're, they're punishing the NYXL really nicely. I think New York played a bad comp, but they didn't play the comp badly. All right. That's got to rattle your cages. Now, okay, but Havana's really bad for dive. Nambani is not bad for dive. Nambani, you could definitely win by playing a dive comp. Are we going to review Houston Dallas? No, I already did a companion stream of that shit and I do not need it pumped into my veins. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Nambani. What, this gets worse? This gets worse on Nambani? I genuinely believe it would be easier to get alarm from Fusion to New York than to get the right coaches for New York and retrain Jonak to play more appropriately. Um, maybe, maybe. Like, it, it, I can see that reasoning, if you mean in the off-season. I thought you meant, like, now they should get rid of Jonak. That doesn't make any sense, to get rid of Jonak now. But, you know, in the, if, in the off-season, if they wanted to trade some pieces around, then, yeah, I could see that. If they traded Jonak away and they got some, uh, you know, like a... Even if they got, like, a shoe, but they managed to get shoe plus, I don't know somebody else i can't even think really what they would want the the problem with new york is not their players though it's their play style of their players and so i i i think you're at a bit of a loss if you just want to start swapping players from team to team because all right you get let's let's run this experiment you get rid of jonak and you trade him for like say let's say alarm it's just a one for one trade for alarm and alarm plays you know more of the classic style He's not going to require all of these resources that Jonak does. Except Mano still plays defensively. Like, you're approaching this idea from the assumption and the premise that it is Jonak that causes New York to play passively. And I don't think that's true. I think that Mano is also a big portion of that. I think Mano is very naturally a reactive tank player. He has always played reactively throughout his entire career. Even when he played for AF Blue, which was a very aggressive team, he would always reactively dive. So, I think that it's absolutely a coaching thing because it needs to apply to all players on the team. Not just... Five, not just Jonak. Because otherwise, I mean, what are you doing? Just trading half your team away. I mean, you might as well not be New York at that point. Alright, let's take a look then. So, New York are going to be defending with the Genji Sombra, which... I think makes sense, right? Like, they're going to try and get hacks onto Eamon, hacks onto Jinmu, who I use, theoretically going to have maybe more resources to be able to duel Jinmu. Uh, but their main aim here is to punish... Oh, my fucking God, really? Okay, well, Nene dying right at the beginning of this is, like, the worst-case scenario. What's, uh, what's going on with Johnny? What, what was he saying in the chat? If you had to pick an aggressive or passive tank for your all-star team, which would you pick? I mean... Normally... I think aggressive. I think aggressive, but there are definitely advantages to having an all-star team that doesn't just isn't just a collection of star players where you can't all get the same resources, but then aggressive doesn't mean that you take resources. In terms of being a main tank, it can mean that you just make more space for the rest of your team. Wait, does he just get bopped there? Oh my god. That's actually... I mean, that's kind of just a fucking nasty shot from Leave. I, I don't even think that that's really too much of a mistake from Nene. Boy, oh boy. 
I mean, he did die really early on, so he might even be able to get back into the fight, but this just opens the door for Eamon. Like, that's just a fucking nasty shot. Like, he's just assuming that he's going to be able to pressure... Li At the same time, though, why is... Why isn't any there, rather than just being in a position to stop Eamon? Isn't that the whole point of their comp? Like, don't you want a Sombra that's playing more passive, if that's your style? If that's the style that you're trying to play here? Dude, Eamon's fucking... Ball tech is outrageous. Flies around the map like a goddamn bat. They trade Zens, but both get rezzed. They've just lost so much position, though. They can't stop Eamon at all. Hopper's just hanging out underneath. Gets d -macked. This is a fucking car crash from New York. But the Hunters are really good at taking space. Like, if we actually look at how that fight... It's... it's as soon as New York give up position, they've... They've basically lost. But how can they... How can they hold this top position when they can't stop Eamon? Like, he's just in. He's just in their backlines. He's in their backlines. And now he's just shooting mana from the, from the other side. And it's not like they can dive these guys. They're, they need to drop. And now who are you taking too much damage? So he's backed off. And now they're all playing in the streets. They really need to go aggressive at some point, like, now. Hmm. They do try. Not really sure why Nene is putting so much focus on late young. That doesn't make sense to me. But then Eamon just zips around the map so much that he's always outside of Nene's reach anyway. Very difficult for Nene to do his job, but I don't think he's prioritizing the right people there. Anyway. Stop the payload. Uh, I'm probably just going to review this game. I've got some other stuff to do today as well before Plat Chat. I don't know, maybe I'll do another one. What were the other ones? Uh, Spark played against Seoul and London against Guangzhou. Nene again dies first. Why aren't you hacking him here? Okay, he did get a hack. God, Leave is just fucking destroying Nene. I think Nene was too slow with the hack, though. Now it's 6v6. Jinmu's killed. Who are you? Yeah. I think Tracer would help the NYXL if Who Are You was able to play that role as well as he could the Genji, but I mean, you obviously want the Genji for Who Are You. The Hunter's largest pro- the, the NYXL's largest problem here is that they can't find a good initiation. Right, they get into position and they dive, but they they can't really find a good target. And that all comes down to Nene's hacks. If Nene hacks Jinmu, that's a great target. If Nene hacks Ivaltal, that's a great target. If Nene hacks Eamon, that's a decent target. I mean, like, diving a ball is still... He's got a lot of health and you're going to sacrifice your position, but it's it's acceptable. Now, what they can do, though, is, like, try and hack Eamon and then dive somebody else, and then Eamon's not going to be there to be able to peel. Or to counter-dive. Jesus Christ, Eamon is destroying. The minefield and the bob just fucking demolished them. Dude, the hunters are rolling. Oh, this is what people mean about Eamon playing it as a Sombra counter. Eamon is actually fucking farming. They're putting so much pressure on New York. The slam to take him out of Invis. 
It's so nice. Nene is just running into him and all over the place now. Okay, he gets hacked this time. The blade is out, but they get solo grabbed. <laughs> but why did who are you try and go aggressive? Why not just try and... F why not just... Instead of blading there, why aren't, why, aren't, why isn't he waiting for the EMP? And YXL have fallen to pieces. I think they boomed a bit here. They don't understand how to beat the Hunter's comp. Top speed. The EMP was successful though. But now they've used the EMP blade, primal self-destruct. And they got one fight win. Hello. Nice face. <laughs> um Yeah. Thank you. Okay, dog. The Raymond, one, two, three, one, three. Thank you for the prime. I give her 100 bits as well, Ophion. With Ben Best continuing to perform really well this season, where would you rank him against the other main tanks? I don't know. These questions are so hard, because, like, what am I supposed to say? Oh, exactly sixth. I mean, fuck, fuck if I know. I don't do a ranking. I don't do a power ranking of main tanks every week, so I can't really say. But Ben Best has been very good. Very good. That wasn't my attempt at flattery. She came in and she, Beth made a... Like, she went like that. So I was like, oh, nice face. It was more of an insult, if anything. Ben Best is at number six, Poogas. Yeah, number six. Exactly. Let's think about this a little bit. Okay. Should the NYXL be playing... Hyper aggro. Alright, they've given up so much space to the hunters here. Should they... Is the answer to just play more aggressive? But if they do, who do they dive? If they just try and dive Molly in the back, he's just gonna get peeled. If they try and dive... I mean, it's the same for any target. They can't just do a raw dive with their comp. So they need to wait for a hack, which means they have to play slow. Right? Like, they, they just can't dive if they, they... They can't just straight up dive. Like, they need to wait for bubbles to be forced. They need to wait for aimer to initiate. They need to wait for a hack to actually go off. Otherwise, they're just going to get eaten. This comp has too much peel. So they need to play slow. Which means that it's on Nene to set up the win conditions. But then they're taking... The Hunters are just taking a lot of decisive space with Eamon. Ball should not be able to take space. The minefield helps. Maybe maybe instead of having Nene in the back lines trying to set up dives, maybe Nene should be playing with them. Uh, but then if Nene's with them, he's not really going to be able to hack anybody because he's just going to take damage. It's not like he's playing behind a Ryan shield. Ballpov, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys the ballpov in a bit. I'm just trying to, just trying to figure out exactly what New York are doing wrong because I think I'm putting a lot of the blame on Nene here. But I'm not, again, I'm not sure whether the no, and New York's comp can actually deal with what hunters are throwing at them. I mean, unless Nene is getting really key hacks constantly, then I don't think New York's comp can really do anything. Okay, let's let's take a look at the aim and pop. Spy checking all over the place. Slams it in, gets onto Mano. Oh, he's gonna boop him into the minefield. Holy shit, Eamon's a fucking legend.
God, he's actually nasty. Whoa, Nene dies to leave again. I do think Nene is playing too slow here, though, because if he gets a hack as they're coming in through this choke point, then New York should be diving. They should be playing aggressive. They just need that first hack. And a hack onto anyone help. Oh, well, not anyone, but a hack onto a lot of people help. Like, if he hacks late young, they can dive the back line. They can try and dive Molly or something. Or, or even leave. Discord orb on a squishy target. Dive them. They don't have the bubble. They don't have defense matrix or a shield or anything. But instead, Nene is just waiting for... I don't know what the fuck he's waiting for. Waiting for the perfect moment. God, Leave has just destroyed him every time. Every single time. Leave had a really quiet first two maps, but he is just snacking on Nene. But surely at some point, Nene just... Oh, wow, they don't even get a touch. Bob is there at the back, and it's only Nene that was in position. Well, that's a horrible first round if you're a New Yorker. And I think you've got to point the finger at Nene. I mean, I'm trying to think through the comp and think, you know, if I'm being unfair, but at the end of the day, the, die, the guy died immediately on point A, has died every time that he's peeked his head out to leave. Although that's more to do with Leave playing well than it is Nene, but even so. Just unable to get off a single good hack throughout the map and had one EMP that won a team fight. Like, one EMP on Numbani defense and no decent hacks is not a good Sombra play. And although Leave is making his job pretty difficult and Eamon's also making his job pretty difficult, I think you've if you're playing a Sombra comp, you've got to expect more from your Sombra. I, at this point, though, if I'm New York, I'm giving up on the Sombra. Because surely Nene says to his team, I can't do a fucking thing, lads. There's, I'm, I'm getting pooed on every time I come out of stealth. I, do they not communicate that and change up the comp? Do they just think it'll work better for them on offense? I don't know. What is this paragraph? I think NYXL need to play a style that isolates either Eamon from his team or his supports from the team. I see the NYXL just not really fighting. The supports can keep everyone up without being contested too much. And late just still is a tum da 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 this comp doesn't work well at isolating Eamon or the supports, at least not without taking too much pressure from late uh, DPS. Yeah. Well, I mean, how are you going to isolate Eamon? I think you need to either be playing a double shield, double shield McCree, or like a double shield comp in general, honestly, because the Sombra could play behind the shield and try and just uh, try and focus Eamon down a little bit when he goes aggressively. Or I think... If you played the Sombra and the Tracer so that you could continually harass the backline maybe with the Tracer and try and try and make space for Mano with the Tracer and the and the Sombra. Because you can't really you can't play who are you constantly in their backlines. He needs the Winston to be able to make space for him. But if you play a Tracer, the Tracer can actually make space for your Winston. Because as they harass the backline, the their front line kind of turns to look at what's happening at the back, and then your Winston can initiate on the targets that you've brought weak or hacked. But Genji Sombra is not working for them. It's just putting too much pressure on Nene to be able to find those crucial hacks. I thought it might end up working. I was I was saying that Genji Sombra might be the answer on uh, on Havana, but I mean it's it's clear that that is not the case. Okay, so what do they do here? I mean, I would expect that Nene's going to try and work his way around behind and they're going to try and hack a target up on the top right and push people off the high ground and then work from there, but fucking who knows. Let's take this kind of position. Bird's eye pov. 
the the wait goat the ibis is i an ibis is that supposed to be an ibis or a gazelle perhaps All right, they sit around for 30 seconds, presumably to get Nene in position, and now they're going to dive. Okay, where is Nene? Okay, Nene is ready to get a hack off. No, he's not. No, he's not. He's way too late. Well, cool. Good attempt. Not. <sighs> but you haven't heard a good not joke since Borat in 2002 or whenever that came out. Yeah, he hacked the Zarya after both bubbles had been used. Just way too late with the initiation. Like, what he can do, I think, and what would be better, is if Nene is shooting them and taking away some attention as they dive and then tries to go for a hack if he wants to be like the second person to hack or he can just go for a hack before his team jump in and then even if they even if they stop him hacking somebody they at least they're not looking at the dive all right he's going to wait i thought he was going to play in streets i thought nene was trying to look for a hack here as his team dived but again he's not coordinated Okay, you got a hack on Ivaltol after Mana's already died. Lord Almighty. Nene's playing so um, scared as well because Leave just shot him instantly every time he came out of. Out of stealth previously. My EMP is charging. You're on 70%. The bubble's immediate from late, young. They're making Nene's life a misery. I, I I don't think that he should be playing this Ombra. I mean, it, the, the Hunters are objectively playing this really well. They are... Okay, the coordination is off from New York, but they're making Nene's life a fucking misery on the Sombra. They understand what the win condition is for New York, and they are shutting it down. They've demolished Nene every single time he's come in. And like some of the times, okay, Nene should have chosen a different timing, but a lot of the times it's just like Leave has hit a crazy headshot on him, or Late Young's there with a bubble. They just burn him down immediately. Okay, EMP Blade has got to be there. They've got to hit the EMP Blade in this fight. Okay, Jonak dies. That's going to set things back another 30 seconds. But it does give Nene time to get into position. He wants to be EMPing Late Young here, I think. Hmm, maybe not actually, because Lightning. Well, yeah, Lightning is playing with Molly, so he can probably catch them both. Wait, what's he going for here? Is he going to try and hack Eamon and then EMP the other side? What the fuck is going on? Oh my god, Lightning again with the bubble. Perfectly timed bubble. EMP just doesn't exist, apparently. Nene doesn't want to go for it. Gonna save it for the recontest, perhaps? Nice hack. That's a good hack. This. This is the power of playing a defensive Sombra, is that whenever Eamon comes in, you can hack him. The key here, though, is that Nene would not always be able to get that kind of value because normally he'd be playing in a situation where the rest of the hunters can stop him hacking. But in this situation, he can't because he's got control of the high ground. But that's why I think that if he was playing a defensive kind of Sombra with shields, that he would have had so much more success. As it is, he's just got... Just can't do anything with the rest of his team. All right, he's holding this EMP, so he's managed to hold it. But no, I mean, they should look to snowball this forwards. No, they should be looking for a, an EMP here. They can get free push on the payload, though. They don't have to play too fast. They should look to push the payload a little bit, and then as the hunters come forward to contest, then they should go for a big EMP. Just keep the momentum going. I mean, positioning is good here. Oh my god, he should have stayed on the high ground, I think. Wait, what the fuck is going on? Why are they just trying to do a... 
Why are they trying to do a default dive? Uh, well, I suppose he EMPs defensively onto Jinmu and Eamon. I don't know about that, though. I don't know about that. Because what you've done is you've, you've turned it from a situation where you would be the aggressor, constantly putting pressure on the hunters and keeping the payload moving. You've allowed the hunters to stop the payload, and you are giving control of the tempo to the, of the fight to them. And now you've just, like, okay, you've got a 5v, you've got a 6v5 situation, but you haven't got more than one kill in the fight, and the hunters can just use all the ults that they like here. And now it's 6v6, because Eamon's already back. I don't think that was a bad way to use that EMP. I think they should have tried to initiate before Jinmu was even in position to pull out his Dragon Blade. Before Late Young was even in position to grab. Try and win the team fight so that they have to save those ults for the next fight. See if you can get checkpoint B just by pushing forwards. Stuff the choke. Nene is pretty weak here. Translocated out. Both teams have blade and trance. Can Nene get a hack? A hack on Molly would be huge here. If they can try and, like, harass somebody to... For oh, this would be the perfect time to, to hack Molly. Because he knows that Late Young isn't there. He knows that Late Young isn't there. What's he doing? He's just hiding around the corner. Wait, what the fuck is going on? He's hiding... What the fuck is going on here? All right. I thought they were going to set up for a hack onto Molly, and then who are you initiating with the blade, right? Like, some of offensive play where they dive in... And they remove the trance from Molly so that there's no counter to the blade. Instead, who are you... Like, Jonax trance gets forced or something by Jinmu, and then who are you blades to defend? I, yeah, they're just... They're waiting for the hunters to attack them. Now who are you blades? I think that the the NYXL look like they've been shooketh from the previous attack round. Because the Hunters were playing so aggressively on offense, the NYXL have decided to play hyper-defensive. But now they're on attack. And so by playing hyper-defensive, they are just ticking time off their own clock. They're taking time off their own clock and never setting up any win conditions for themselves other than we'll punish the hunters when they push in. Yo, Eamon is a fucking demon. Oh, okay, so what, what what happens with this aggression? So Jinmu is punished. Evaltal gets hacked. The hack on Evaltal is not actually paired up with anything else. They're just taking space, so the hack was totally wasted in terms of the timing. Light Young burns down Who Are You. Who Are You's finding it really difficult, by the way, to be able to get in. Yeah, this, I mean, this is not working. Nene's having a... Nene's having a bad game on Sombra. They're making life hard for him, the Hunters, but he's also having a bad game. And Who Are You and Mano are both finding it difficult to approach because they're taking poke damage from Leave and from uh, Late Young as they get in. And Eamon's just stopping them approaching. I, I, I hate this more defensive look from New York. I, I don't think that this is the answer at all. I think on offense, when you control the tempo of the fight, you should really take advantage of that instead of just handing it back over to your opponents. Oh, it's both, Dragon Ninja. NYXL's game plan is poor. And the fact they haven't adapted the game plan. Oh, they actually... That's wrong. NYXL have adapted the game plan. They have become even more defensive to try and counter the Hunters. But they're just giving way too much space for for the Hunters, for Eamon and Jinmu. And Nene is having a bad game. It's both. But also, Hunters are playing their comp well. 
Hunters understand their composition. Late young, uh, sorry, Eamon is having a hell of a game. Lever's actually turned up on Nambani as well. And Jimu's had some good plates. This is... This is the Hunters back to their best, in my opinion. This is like... This is the Hunters back to their best where they could totally boom even a good team. Because we saw NYXL play on the first two maps. They're, they're a good team. They're not playing badly. This is, this is not them having a bad week. If they were playing against another team that wasn't running a weird comp, they would... I think they'd be doing very well. Uh, but they just don't get how to beat the Hunters. They don't get it. And that's like the fucking very essence of the Hunters, is it not? To be able to take a good team that would normally beat you and leave them completely paralyzed and unable to come up with a game plan on the fly. This is, this is peak Hunters. EMP onto Late Young is actually useful. Okay, so Nene gets his second EMP of the map. Second EMP of the map. To be able to uh, secure checkpoint B. For the NYXL. And now there's a minute and a half here for NYXL. And even though I know they're not going to do this, what they need to be doing is getting Nene into position to get hacks and play aggro. They can't allow time for Eamon to set up and time for uh, Jinmu to be in position. They need to put pressure on the Hunters. Force out those bubbles. And instead, they're just playing hyper-defensive. But if you, if you give the Hunters all the space they need, then they have all of their abilities still up to be able to punish you and just play aggro. So I don't think the game plan is there for New York. I, I think they've made the wrong adaptation in this series. Jonak 22-3% away from Trance. I'm not even convinced it would have made a difference, honestly. I mean... Okay, what would have happened here if Jonak had trance? They would have popped trance. They would have all clustered up around here. And they'd have traded blade for it. And then they'd be pushing back into a grav. So, I... I almost think it's... I almost think it's better that New York wiped there. Because they'd already given up so much space that investing ults in that fight, you're still going to lose. And then you're going to have nothing for the final fight. I suppose there's a chance they could have turned it. Well, that's actually quite nice. Let's take a look at what goes on here. Late Young's trying to catch them with a sneaky grab around the side. I mean, you, this is just a dumb fuck play, honestly. Like, doing this kind of stuff against a Sombra makes no sense. This is the kind of stuff the Bumper used to do, man. Where he's just, like, hiding around a corner and you're like, you realize you're playing against a hero that can be invisible? Like, you realize you are playing against a hero that can be invisible and you have no idea that she's watching you, right? I just fucking knew that Nene had seen her. Late Young gets hacked. Bomb is out. Definitely would have died to the bomb even if he hadn't been killed there by Jonak and Mano. The bomb is perhaps a little wasted, you could say, but to be honest, I understand investing it because if they hadn't just got the default kill from Jonak slinging headshots into Late Young, then that was a massively wasted opportunity, you know? So, there's 15 seconds left. You want to commit ults to ensure that you have an opening. Okay, and now you've got this next fight. So, you need to be setting up for some kind of, like... If you can get a hack onto Late Young and then Blade into the back, or if you can get a, a hack onto Molly, is even better, but... Let's see what Nene tries to set up for. With Late Young dead, though, they should be... They should have been surging forwards and instead they've they're still playing very passive although a hack there onto Eamon would also be great mm. late young is 
Okay, this is what I thought was going to happen on checkpoint B. They've hacked Molly, and who are you's gone in for the blade? There's also a, a grav in the back. Um, I thought Jonak would trance that. Oh, he has tranced it. He just might not get there in time. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. Oh my god, and who are you dashed into the mines? Animo's there as well. A little bit tragic, to be honest. A little bit tragic. <sighs> People are trying to peel for Mano at the back as they're trying to go aggressive. So you've got only who are you going forwards with the blade because Nene got the hack off. But Nene again didn't realize that they'd been grabbed towards the back. It's a bit of bad timing, honestly. I think both things happen at basically the exact same time. I mean, if we look at, like, 25% speed here, I think Nene's getting the hack at the exact same time as... Oh, actually, that's not true. Mano gets... Okay, yeah, I mean, Nene should have just stayed up top and not tried to hack Molly. He... Nene needs to wait a little bit for his team to figure out what's going on defensively. Also, Jonak needs to be there quicker with the trance. Jonak is fucking miles away. Was was Jonak spending this time shooting Eamon? You were, weren't you, you little crazy motherfucker? Oh no, he got booped backwards. I think though, Jonak wants to be using trance like as soon as he hears the grav go down, doesn't he? A little bit of... I mean, he was really far away, though. It's pretty nice from Eamon, to be honest. you got to wonder if that's some kind of set play as well, booping the Zen back so that he's far away from the grav. Uh, it's got to be a set play. So nice, actually. And it's, like, even triply better for the Hunters because that's the exact same time at which Nene goes for the hack on Molly. Just luck? I don't think that's luck. I don't think so. Look, as soon as, as soon as Eamon goes forward and boops the backline away, Late Young uses that opportunity to look for a grav. Just like a solo grav, and he's the only player alive. Like he could have done that at any time, but he specifically chooses the time when Jonax booped away. I, I think that that's, I think that's an attempt at a set play. Try and burn Mano down before the trance can be used. Spec, who are you? Oh, do you really want to see him dash into the mines? You guys really want to see him dash into the mines? Who are you has just been begging for an opportunity to get a good blade this whole time? Oh, Lord Almighty. Oh, yeah. I, when I say a set play, I don't mean like... Eamon was like... Okay, let's execute uh, Project Alpha. I'm gonna boop the Zen away and you're gonna look for the Solograph. I mean, it's like... It's a deliberate maneuver from both of the players. I'm not saying it's something they went over in scrims. I'm just saying it's it's like a deliberate choice to get the grav while spooping away the Zen. Oh. Yeah, Nambani was not a good showing from New York. Not a good showing. Okay, so by map 5, they must have figured out that the Sombra is not the answer. It's Li Zhang. Double shield is really powerful on a lot of these segments. They're going to be running double shield McCree, right? Okay. Huh. Sombra and McCree. Okay, for starters, why is Hopper still on the D.Va? Can we puzzle that one out? Why would you not run the Sigma? Like, the Hunters are playing slow. They're taking position. Like, you're, you're just going to get farmed if 
you try and take off angles as diva late young's just gonna actually farm you so i mean eating the grab is just absolute nonsense you don't pick a hero for that Five, so four, three, i don't know i feel like sigma would probably be the better pick here especially because sigma has some accretion which is an extra form of cc uh i don't think that hopper really does anything on this diva then we have the Sombra and the McCree. I'm not a big fan of the Sombra and McCree. But why am I not? What would I rather they played? I mean, you can't play May. You could play Torb. Uh, I mean, I guess this is fine. Sombra and the McCree. I'm just thinking about, like, damage output. Do you actually have enough to be able to shred somebody after you... After you flash them or something? Reaper? Uh, yeah, you could play Reaper, but I think that you would not, most of the time just be too far away from your opponents to do anything useful. Sim? But then the Sim is not normally paired with the McCree as well. You know, both like to be in the front line, taking the resources. You need some kind of low resource hero to pair alongside the McCree. Because the McCree is someone that you're going to be giving most of your healing and peel to. So you can't really play somebody who also requires a lot of healing. Which is why I was suggesting May or Torb. Obviously you can't play May in this current hero pool. So maybe Torb is the answer. The Sombra could work though. I just think that they should be running a Sigma. A Sigma gives you an extra position for the... Uh, an extra position for you to shield. Wait, did Nene flank around the back? Okay, I don't think that Nene should be looking for flanks if they're going to play this kind of style, though. I think he should be sitting... Well, like, little flanks. Little flanks. But he should also just be looking for default hacks behind the shield. Okay. Hack onto Eamon. Has the, sh the shield is already broken from Mano, I think. Looking to play aggro. I think the Sigma would be a lot better here for being able to control the pace. Leave the tank in the back line. I think the Hopper is pretty useless. And Jinmu's just dashed in and snacked on them. Oh, and now Sabiobi's gone over to the Tracer. I mean, I was actually thinking about whether you could run Tracer McCree. And I I genuinely think Tracer McCree would have been better than Sombra McCree. The Tracer can both peel and try and hunt targets after they've been CC'd. But now you've got Tracer Sombra, which is... I think Tracer Sombra is a good counter to the Hunters, but you would want to play a Winston with it, <laughs> not the Ryan. So now you're in a another really weird scenario. Like, what is your Ryan doing now? Your Ryan's just walking around. Uh, the Ryan can't really take position because he's just going to get hit from so many different angles. And you can't dive people with the Tracer and the and the Sombra. You just have to hope that people push your Ryan and you get a hack on them. Okay, Blade is in. Okay, the beat is decent. They've managed to establish position on top on the point. Late Young's getting punished. Sebiobi's doing a great job of being able to finish off these targets, which is why the tracer is just so good. A, a good hack onto Amon, and Nene and Sebiobi burst him down. So once the Rhine is actually on the point, this comp works really well. They just couldn't run Sombra Tracer in the previous maps because they were running Who Are You. 
They absolutely should have done, though. I think even even with Who Are You. I mean, once they realized that the Genji wasn't getting any value because he was just getting poked from distance and then they needed help, they... You need to swap to some kind of McCree comp or the Sombra Tracer. I, I do think the Sombra Tracer is normally better with the Winston, though. But now that they're on the point, the Rhine is fine. Blade is in. Great boop from Eamon as well, just to disrupt everybody's position. What a sick mini dive with just Eamon and Jinmu onto Animo. Late Young goes down. I think he was hacked there as well, right? That's the same thing that they tried to do on Numbani. Just get a hack and a bomb onto Late Young because he can't defend himself. There's no shields. And he's, he's like the most static person on the whole team. Oh, he got solo EMP'd actually. I didn't even realize. I thought that was just a default hack. Mana's just stuck there, just kind of holding up his shield, hoping that other people are going to do work. Which they do somewhat, but Mano is not having a fun time. Look at Mano in the corner, just can't do a thing. It'd be so much more coordinated, I think, if they had the Winston available. The Shadow can be useful, I suppose. Nice pulse by Sibiorbi. They recap? They let Hunters get the recap in the middle of that? I mean, they're going to lose the fight anyway, so I suppose it doesn't really matter that much. Okay, one final push. Mano now goes over to the Winston, which I think is more to do with the time constraint. But also, it is just better at being able to push in. They've got a beat to be able to work with, but you kind of want to save that for Jinmu's blade. Is Hopper going to be able to touch? They're going to make Nene touch. Oh my god. Mano just manages to get in there. Okay. Oh, Animo beats, but it only hits him and Mano. Oh, it does get on Jonak at the end there as well. Okay, what's going on here? Sibiovi and Mano are in the back. They've managed to kill Leave. Nice. They've managed to kill Veltal. Hopper's gone down, though. Where was Jonak in the middle of all of this? What the fuck was Jonak doing in the middle of all of this fight? Where has he been? Ah, of course he is. Of course he is. Well, to be fair, he's getting dueled. I mean... Whoa, what did he do with his fade? Why is he not there with the rest of his tanks? That's like the main advantage for running Moira is that they can get stuck in with the middle of the fight. Mm. I mean, the backline's being bladed, so... Makes sense that you wouldn't just want to shift into the rest of the team. But it is mega greedy to use your fade in order to go backwards and kill the Genji. If you used your fade to move forwards to be able to heal Mano or Hotba, you would win this fight, I think. Especially considering he has his fucking coalescence at this point. This is just premium Jonak things. I think he's thrown this fight, actually. Well, NYXL had two different answers there. The Sombra Tracer seemed to work better for them, so I would anticipate them running the Sombra Tracer on this. Oh, uh, well, this is a fucking control center, isn't it? So you're going to run double shield with the... Uh... Okay, Sim and a Junkrat. I think this also indicates to me, though, that they're just running their default comp rather than thinking about what the Hunters are running. Maybe they're assuming the Hunters are going to run Ryan here as well, but the Hunters have been running ball all match. The Junk is not... I mean, the Junk isn't designed to work against the Hunters comp, but it still might, actually, because it'll force out the bubbles really early on and 
I think the Hunters will find it difficult to push in after Eamon. I don't think Eamon will find it difficult to push in, but... Leave Pov? Oh god, what are we about to witness? Oh, okay, so they do end up running the McCree with the Junkrat, so I don't think this is too bad. Oh, what a nice shot. Another shot into Animo. Huge picks. You would think the hunters were the ones with the shield. Animo dead in every fight. I mean, it's not like he was badly positioned, though. Leaf just hit some nasty shots once Aim and Pile drived. The mob comes out, and Wagsell have gone back over to the Sombra Tracer. Oh, thank you. Nice. Tortelloni. That looks delicious. Nice. Alright, let's look at the beginning of this fight. They're running the Batiste with the uh, Lucio still, though. Leave really heated up in the second half of this match. Came online in a massive way against these flankers. He didn't really have that good of a game in the first half at all. When they were playing dive v dive. That's a pretty nice uh, play from New York though. Wrapping around the back, finding some targets. Ignoring Eamon, or playing where Eamon can't have that much impact. My biggest takeaway from this match so far... Oh my god, really?! Leaf kills Animo again?! Animo's still working towards his first sound barrier. He's died first in every fight. It's leaving Molly, right? Like, Molly just hits a bunch of damage on him, too. Boy, oh boy. He only had a bit of damage, yeah. It's a damage boosted leaves, just doing so much work. Dive into the back, Sebiobi's weak. Get the kill. Leave is up, t uh, Jinmu's up top, just killing Jonak on his own. Let's, t let's take a look at Nene, though, in this fight. Just doing nothing. Has had a really bad game. At the most predictable angles. The hunters know that he's coming. The timing's not great for the hacks at all. The damage isn't really there either. Not synced up with Sebiobi. Not good. Not good. Nene's at 64%. To be fair, he did swap off from the junk route, right? But bit of a disastrous situation. Your mano has just leapt into the back there without a hack on anyone. Mano's just fucking given up at this point by the look of it. He's just trying to make something happen himself. 
Oh, will Nene get an EMP or a single crucial attack on a target target in this entire map? Actually, that's not true. He he did get some in round one. Got a couple, but not enough. Not enough. I, I've also got a question. Why didn't they run Sebi Orbi on the Sombra? Sebi Orbi was their Sombra player when they played Sombra Goats back in uh, last year. And that's a pretty similar style. I mean, Sombra Goats is like, you're playing up at the front, you're trying to hack key targets in order to finish them off with the rest of your team. Wasn't he really good too? He was pretty good, yeah. His timing was really good. Like, he was very synced up with the rest of his team. Yeah. How would I sum up this game, though? Chengdu played really well in the second half. They understand their comp. They understand the win conditions. They're very good at being able to deal with an enemy Sombra on the other side. They deserve the win. At the same time, New York clearly understand how to play the meta, but they don't understand how to beat the Chengdu Hunters. I think if New York had played against another team this week, they would have actually looked pretty good. They would have... I think New York would have looked fine if they played against another team. I think they just fucking collapsed trying to deal with what the Hunters were throwing at them. They just... They didn't get it. Nene was finding no value as well. Le leave. Actually had a great game on... Uh, particularly Numbani and Li Zhang. But I don't think there's... Any issues there for New York. That are gonna... That are gonna affect them... When they play against anyone else. Like this is... If you're the coach of the NYXL... You almost say to your team... Just, listen, just fucking forget it. It was trying to... Because, like, who else plays like them? No one. There's no... Is there any big lesson that you can take away from this game if you're a New York fan? Uh, sorry, if you're a New York player? Uh, there's a couple of small things. But, generally speaking, they just didn't have a grasp of how to defeat them. And no one else in the league plays like Chengdu. So, unless you're playing against Chengdu again, don't worry about it. Too passive? I mean, yeah, Maybe. You could definitely say that. Especially when it came to Numbani, their attack and them not taking advantage of opportunities to like create their own advantages in fights. That was an issue. But on Havana, they weren't too passive. They just... They were trying to play dive on a map that isn't really good for dive. And they hadn't really figured out the best ways of being able to deal with Chengdu's comp. And then on Li Zhang, they had like two answers. They were trying the shield comps with the McCree, but then they figured it wasn't really working, so they were moving over to the to the um, Tracer Sombra instead. But this, more than New York looking really shit in this match, my biggest takeaway from it is that this is Hunters playing at their peak. This is peak Hunters. Individual players popping the fuck off. Leave had a great game. Eamon had a really good performance on ball. They have a niche specific comp that counters the current meta. At least the meta in APAC where people are playing a lot of um, dive in the Genji Ash. And they... Uh, and, and they are back to being a dangerous team that can upset top teams. What is this? Chengdu versus NYXL, an Eastern perspective. What is this? What the fuck does that mean? Is this just a panda punching New York? Yeah. What is the... What are these possible Chengdu coach changes? I mean, also, I don't think Chengdu played differently to how they have done classically, like, the whole of last year. But Chengdu did play differently to how they've been playing the last few weeks. But they just kind of got back to their old... Their old style. Bright mode? Yeah, what the fuck? I don't change shit. 
Following my post on the possible Chengdu coach changes, I want to make a follow-up post detailing some reasons how the NYXL... Many fans are confused on exactly how NYXL choked. Even side choke Kappa. The fuck, I didn't even watch the match. I've only just finished watching the match. What is this guy talking about? Of course I'm going to be confused if I haven't watched it. What the, the hell is that comment? What the fuck is that? Delicious, thank you. <laughs> Do, I, I suppose I should feel happy, I suppose, that Reddit considers me to be an omnipotent being. An absolute omniscient freak that just knows everything that has ever happened before I even watch it. Alright. Uh, uh, Sombra is and has never been a propaganda to Eamon's ball. Da, 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 da. Scattered out Nene. Da, 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 da. I don't know. I think this has been overstated a little bit. This was like a massive meme coming out of this match that Eamon countered Sombra or something. It only happened a few times. Like, most of the time that Nene actually got countered, it was by Leave shoving a bullet down his head. It wasn't really from Eamon that often. All right. Eamon made it really difficult for a Nene by just zipping around the map so much. And his ball mechanics are nuts. And that's true. Nene does have very small windows of opportunity to actually get anything done because he's fucking flying around the map. And then as soon as he actually comes out, uh, he, he, it's either Late Young's there with a the perfect bubble or Leave is there shooting his head off. Eamon does sometimes harass the Sombra though. But I think this is overstated. I don't think that you look back at that match, it wasn't really Eamon doing most of the work. It was mostly Leave and Late Young who were dealing with the Sombra. Always there, always ready. Sombra is weaker with the Brigida left. They didn't even play Brig, so this didn't matter. But I mean, yes, it's true. The, that aggressive frontline style of Sombra is definitely weaker with the Brigida nerf. We were talking about it at some point during the game with the armor pack changes, but... This just might be a reason why you wouldn't want to run, like, Bat, Break, Ryan, Sigma, McCree, Sombra or something. But it would still have been better than what New York were running. It would have been fine. Jonak was a crucial factor that lost NYXL the game. He had his fucking moments. He definitely had his moments. I think... On map 3, Havana, Jonak doesn't trance even when OT was triggered. Yeah, I mean, he was just saving that. But I, I don't think that they would have won the fight either way, but that was a bit of a weird situation. Jonak was 1v1 in Jinmu, just fucking all the time. I don't think that was a good idea. Jonak using trance to protect himself on Numbani is not Jonak's fault, though. That's the team's fault for playing so passive. If you play that passive, what the hell else is Jonak supposed to do? Just die? Or then you'd be criticizing him for dying with his trance alive. Like, it's absolutely not his fault on Numbani. On Numbani, the team is just playing too slowly, so he can never get in a position where, where he can use it for anything useful. He just has to sit there and he's like, well, I guess if you guys aren't going to push, then I'm just going to eventually get killed by Jinmu. So he has to pop his trance... Defensively. Well, Lee Jang Tower, I agree. Jonak, fucking hell. 1v1 in Jinmu's Genji at, at some crucial times. I think this comment is literally about the thing that that I noticed on Lee Jang Market. I think there's a combination of Jonak's playstyle needing to change and has needed to change for quite some time. And also... And also, uh, New York's playing way too defensively. Which I don't think is totally Jonak's issue. A lack of competent coaching? I don't think you can really say... Okay, if you're a coach of New York, though... I, how do you, how do you counter-strat a Chengdu style that you've never seen before? If you're Chengdu... Oh, sorry. If you're New York... You've never seen Chengdu play those comps, probably. They haven't been scrimming against you recently because they have a match coming up. And no other team in the league plays like them. So, like, what? You're just theory crafting coming into the game what you think Chengdu might play. You're probably just scrimming against other teams and learning the meta. So, it's the classic issue that you always come into when you play against Chengdu. And at the end of the day, that's... I mean, there's something that has to come down to the coaching, for sure, but... It's on the players. When you're in the middle of a match, it's on the players to adapt to um, 
you know, between maps one and two and just in the middle of the game itself. I don't know. That was uh, a, a solid game by Chengdu, though. They That's the first time this year. No, not the first time this year, but first time in a number of months where I've thought that Chengdu looked like a competent team that actually had like a... One of the greatest things about watching Chengdu in the past was that they had an idea of a counter strat that they wanted to do. And their idea of what they wanted to do was better than your understanding of the meta. So you didn't really know how to counter them because they were just more comfortable with their own style. And this year they've been pretty bad at that, but this was a really good example of it. 